The English foxhound is the product of more than a century of careful breeding, evident in his remarkable nose, accents, and courage. The history of the breed is well documented in the form of stud books meticulously maintained by masters of foxhounds in both England and America. English records date back nearly two centuries, while American pedigrees can be traced to the mid-18th century, with these early bloodlines readily discernible in modern-day American packs. Canon Kingsley, the poet, Describe the foxhound, the result of nature, not limited, but developed by high civilization. Next to an old Greek statue, there are few such combinations of grace and strength as in a fine foxhound. The English foxhound was admitted to AKC registration in 1909. You'll be seeing many English foxhounds during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. All will help your understanding of the English foxhound. In general appearance, the English foxhound is a balanced, symmetrical hound being somewhat longer in body than his height at the withers. The English foxhound has been selected for scenting power, cry, drive, stamina, moderate speed, pack sense, and courage. He is intelligent and of a cheerful, determined disposition. He is solid, possessing a sturdy build with substantial bone, and bears the wear and tear look of a hound that can last in the chase. Bone is of substance and strength, providing activity, moderate speed, stamina, and endurance. The symmetry and balance of the hound is considered of greater importance than size. Bitches tend to be somewhat more elegant in build than dogs, yet they remain sturdy, and some allowance should be made for differences in the sexes. As you evaluate the English foxhound, bear in mind that differing local terrain and other ecological factors from pack to pack will produce a certain degree of variation in type in the show ring. While obviously pronounced variation from general type should be taken into consideration, slight differences must not affect your overall evaluation. All the dogs in this group, for example, are of acceptable type. Levelness within packs is more important than size variation among packs. Let's begin our detailed examination of the English Foxhound with the head. It is of full size, but not heavy or coarse, and of good length, seen from the side. The muzzle is long and deep. The brow is pronounced, but not high or sharp. From the front, there should be good breadth to both skull and muzzle. The muzzle is long and wide, and is rectangular rather than wedge-shaped. Nostrils are open. The expression is inquiring, bright and intelligent. This muzzle exhibits good length and depth, accompanied by a strong underjaw. 
Although not mentioned in the breed standard, eyes are generally medium in size, expressive, and dark in color. The ears are set such that they lie closely to the cheeks. They may also be rounded. Teeth are strong, even, and of good size, meeting in either a scissors or a level bite. Overshot or undershot bites are a disqualification. Here are two typical English foxhound heads, dog and bitch, exhibiting good length and breadth, strong muzzles, and alert, intelligent expression. The English foxhound's neck is long, nicely tapered, slightly arched, and free from throatiness. It blends smoothly into well-sloped shoulders, which are long and well-muscled without being heavy, especially at the points. The upper arms are long and muscular, with the elbows held straight. The forelegs are straight as a post and very strong with plenty of bone. Pasterns are strong, flexible, and well stood upon. Knuckling over is faulty. Bear in mind that legs and feet are very important in a hunting breed prized for endurance. Seen from the front, the chest should be deep with well-sprung ribs. Note again the straight, strong legs and the elbows held straight, turning neither in nor out. The feet are round and cat-like with well-developed knuckles, strong horn, and thick, tough pads. The dog's weight should be well distributed on all four toes and the heel. The English foxhound's top line is level from withers to tail. The underline should tuck up only slightly. The ribs extend well back and run smoothly into wide, muscular loins and pelvis. Emphasis should be placed on the importance of a strong back and loin in evaluating this hunting hound. This is another correct top line level from withers to tail. There is no dip behind the withers, roach, or downward slope, and the croup is not steep. The tail is feathered and must be strong at the root. It is well set on, meaning neither too high nor too low. It is of medium length, saber-like, and while carried gaily, should never be curled over the back. The tail should not be trimmed of its feathering, and the tip should taper to a clean, natural point. This correct top line is level from withers to tail. Note again the length of rib, running smoothly into the muscular loins and pelvis. This dog's hindquarters are correct. The thigh and second thigh are well muscled and strong with moderate angulation at the stifle and well let down hocks. Stifles are only moderately angulated to provide for endurance, which is of greater consequence than speed. The bone from hock to ground or metatarses is relatively short and perpendicular to the ground not sickle hocked. From the rear, the muscling of the thighs should be evident. Hocks should be parallel, set close to the ground, and turn neither in nor out. The rear feet, like the front feet, are round and cat-like, with thick, tough pads and strong nails. The English foxhound's coat is short, hard, 
dense, and glossy. As for color, any good hound color is acceptable. This includes black, tan, and white, or any combination of the three, as well as so-called pies, consisting of white in combination with yellow, or with the color of the hair or badger, or with tan. No preference should be given to any one color or combination of colors. The English foxhound's gait is perfectly balanced and completely symmetrical. With reach and drive appropriate for great stamina and endurance. The dog should be gated at a moderate speed. Coming toward you, the front leg should be carried straight forward, not thrown out to the side or crossing over. Slight convergence of the legs will be seen as speed increases. Going away, the rear leg should follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. Again with some convergence seen at faster speeds. Here is typical movement. Balanced, symmetrical, effortless, and efficient. The top line remains level and the tail is carried gaily. Reach and drive are consistent with the typical moderate angulation of front and hind quarters. Finally, a word about temperament. The English foxhound is known for his intelligence and good pack sense as well as his cheerful, determined disposition and great courage. He is also adaptable as a family pet. The product of generations of conscientious breeding, the English Foxhound maintains his place in the colorful world of sport with horse and hound.